I failed to do the research. I got too excited. I bought it too soon. And now that I've done the research, I have invaluable information to share with any other homeschool mom who is shopping for homeschool foreign language curriculum. I'm gonna talk about the research that I found after actually purchasing my curriculum. Then the actual cost and what we're getting for what we're paying. So we're going to do an investment analysis. Then I'm going to get into my actual review of Song School Spanish. If you want a like very thorough flip through and like day in the life, sort of do a lesson with us kind of thing, this is not the video for you. So let's dive in. The first thing I found was that a lot of Latina homeschool moms who are trying to teach their children Spanish teach phonetically first. And of course it makes so much sense if you are are going to teach a language, you should teach it the way you teach any language, which is from the baby steps from the beginnings. Every Spanish curriculum or other foreign language curriculum on the market for elementary aged students, they are very concerned with making it very fun and engaging, using songs and videos, They're not very concerned with focusing on those core elements, the phonics, the alphabet, and getting those sounds down really well. The second thing that I learned, it's concerning the question, how early should you learn a language? And the common misconception is that the younger we start teaching a foreign language, the easier it will be for them to speak it later. But what the research actually shows, and I'll just cite one study that I found recently, the Barcelona Age Factor study, where they took students who were learning multiple languages and they started them at different times and they gave them a certain number of hours of instruction and then they tested them at the same number of hours of instruction. So they took an eight-year-old, or many eight-year-olds, and gave them about 200 hours of instruction and then gave those same people about 400 hours of instruction and then gave those same people about 700 hours of instruction. And they did the same with people who started at age 11 and age 14 and age eight, over 18. And then they tested them at these various points and they found some pretty significant differences. The main significant difference is that an 11 year old, given the same number of hours of instruction, performs way better than their eight-year-old starter counterpart. In other words, if you hold off on formal language instruction until the age 11, they are going to learn the language better and faster and perform better on every part of a foreign language test. So that's reading, that's listening, that's dictation. There is a huge difference in the ability to learn languages and it's actually better between the ages of 11 and 13 than between the ages of 14 and 18. You learn language better in that little sweet spot right there. I'm gonna aim for that one. So if your child or children are less than interested in doing this formal language learning, that might be the reason why they might actually be a little too young to really grasp it the first time. But as they get older and get into that 11 to 13 age range, they are going to grasp it so quickly and you're not going to feel like you're grinding your gears. They're going to get it. And they'll probably be way more interested in doing it. Can you let me know, you know, and just talk to me in the comments. I would love to know your language teaching journey with your young students. So if it's true that what an early elementary foreign language student needs is a phonics based curriculum and that they're really sort of grinding their gears a bit between the ages of eight and 11 and probably before then, then why are we spending so much money on the these curriculums. Do you really want to invest a lot of money in something that's not guaranteed to give results? Well, it sort of depends on what you're really aiming for. Are you really trying to teach the language? Because if you're just trying to teach them the language in an enjoyable way, it still might be better to wait. So for me, I bought Song School Spanish. Hold on, let me go get that. For me, I bought Song School Spanish. I got the cards. I got not one, but, but two, two Song School Spanish student workbooks and the teacher's edition. Okay, so I also got the online version of their videos and their MP3 music because the Song School Spanish includes audio and video elements. All of that together cost around $140 for level one. So that's only two of my children with the workbooks. So if we were going to continue with this, I'd have to buy two more workbooks and, and the next level. The first one I had thought to use was called Speedy Spanish, but Speedy Spanish One Christian Light publication for their first set, well, with all of the elements, is that's between $90 and $110. Beautiful Mundo Level One, $88. Amitas, $127. 
to $197. And then Homeschool Languages, the box with the little puppet one, that is between $89 and $199. There are more affordable options. A book called Teach Them Spanish, I think it's at just around $10. Another one is a Spanish phonics book. It says Puerto Rico on it. That one is also around $10, I think. I think I'm probably missing some curriculum. If I am, can you please put in the comments below what you use for elementary Spanish in your homeschool? Anything I miss? And especially if there's affordable options or like fun YouTube channels or something like that, like any resources. I would love for this comment section to be a resource for homeschool moms everywhere looking for elementary Spanish curriculum. Okay, so now I'm going to flip the camera around and show you a little bit of the Song School Spanish and why I wouldn't recommend buying that one or any other Spanish curriculum that is like over a hundred dollars at this age range. When they get older, I would definitely invest in it, but elementary age, younger than 11, there's no need. I will show you Song School Spanish and point out some things about it. Okay, let's turn like it around. That. These Spanish cards, the teacher's edition. It says that the target age range here is between kindergarten and second grade, right? So very young students. It's all about the songs. The songs are pretty much the teacher. There are videos of a teacher. You can find samples online. And then the rest of it is copies of the student workbook with the answers filled in. And then the only thing that isn't just copies of the student workbook are like extra, extra workbook pages that you can make copies of. Okay, so honestly, nothing special. The student workbook goes through the chant that you have, the songs that you're going to sing together, and then like a workbook page. It's relying on those songs to do the teaching and then lots of, you know, what I would call busy work, like worksheet work. There are like puppets that you can cut out in the back, different things in the back that you can cut out to make it more engaging. But you can see it's just worksheets and as you can also see, you're going to have to read this with them, okay? This is not for non-readers. The cards are kind of nice. They're tiny. Hello, hola, and you can match them. It says the English word upside down on it and vice versa. I counted in the back. It seems like you learn a, about 180 words in Spanish level one. Now I'm going to show you the audio and visual. You go to my library, you have to sign in. I click Song School Spanish, book one, because that's the one I actually have. And it has teaching audio and teaching video. So. The video, you can find a sample online, but I'm just going to point out some things about what they teach and what order they teach it. Let's do chapter one. So they start out with maestra and estudiantes. Okay, estudiantes is a lot of syllables. It's one of the first words and it's kind of a difficult one. But so she starts out with maestra and, and not the alphabet, okay? She doesn't even teach the alphabet. Midway through, she just adds a couple of the extra letters in Spanish, but there's like no practice with those letters. It's sort of disjointed. It's like random words and then some random letters and they're not in the context of the whole alphabet. So it's just like, it's not ordered the way that it, it should be ordered or at least the way that I would want to teach it. Then there's the audio. Everything's got the shaker. So some of these are like really childlike and happy and I like them and we'll probably use them in our daily lives. Just like I do piano, we listen to piano, Suzuki method. You have to listen to piano every day. And so we can just listen to Spanish every day. Okay, so it's pretty easy to access. Some of the songs are songs I like, some are songs I don't like. I'll probably use this part. My conclusion with Song School Spanish is probably not to really plan it out or use it in the way that it was intended to be used, but if you would like to know how I do plan out and use curriculums in a year, here is this video. It has been highly requested by elementary homeschool moms. They wanna know once they get the curriculum, how do I plan it out in the year? It's actually a really easy method and I've shared it here.